look for an occupation that you like, and you will not need to labor for a single day in your life. Welcome to Career Corner. Hi, welcome to Career Corner. I'm Patrick Howell, I'm your host. We are here with a wonderful guest today, and I'm actually thrilled to, to be meeting Mr. Kevin Thompson. Who, who uh, This is the first time I've met Kevin, and I'm a little bit surprised by that because we sort of operate in, in similar fields. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kevin, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to use my cheat sheet, my cards here, because uh, this uh, gentleman has a lot going on. Uh, Kevin is the president of Inspired Communications, he, he's really considered a customer experience expert, and we're going to delve into a little bit of what that really means to be a customer experience uh, expert. Uh, Kevin has spent a great deal of time with the Toastmasters organization, and uh, I'll let Kevin, uh, when he comes on air here in a moment, uh, tell you a little bit about what Toastmasters is. He is also the New Jersey chapter president of the NSA, and it is the National Speakers Association NSA. Uh, Kevin is an adjunct faculty member of Rutgers University and also is a Six Sigma black belt in process improvement. So we'll, we're going to delve right into the conversation with Kevin. And hello, Kevin. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Thanks so much for, for you know, taking the time out to be on Career Corner here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank yeah. you. Good. You know, the, the, the real drive of this show, the, the Career Corner, is, is really threefold. It's to, it's to inform to empower and to inspire. We inform people by, uh, by oftentimes highlighting specific careers. Mm -hmm. We uh, empower by, uh, by giving out knowledge, by having people on who are knowledgeable. And then we inspire by having guests on like you who are really is sort of experts in their field and you know, can, can share their wisdom and their experience with other folks. So uh, it really is a thrill to, uh, to have you. I've heard a lot about some of the work that you do. All right, well, thank you. Thank Excellent. you so much. Excellent. Glad to be here. Let's start off. What is, uh, I know what Toastmasters is. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, 17 years ago, I was the president of a local club, but I certainly don't know as much as you because you're obviously a lot more active. What is the Toastmasters or organization? So Toastmasters is a, is a communication and leadership organization, and it is international. So you can go anywhere in the world and find a Toastmasters club. And the real focus of Toastmasters is to have people, regular people, just like you and I and our, and our audience, develop their communication skills and their leadership skills. Mm, okay. How did you, you get involved with the, with the Toastmasters group? Like, what's the, uh, the lineage there? Well, it's, it's really funny. So I was, I was working uh, as a hospital administrator in a, in a hospital in, uh, in the Newark area, a trauma center, and had really done some really great work had developed a, my staff to be number one in employee, uh, employee satisfaction and customer service. And the CEO wanted for us to, uh, wanted me to explain to them exactly how this happened. So I was in front of the entire department head and I was just overwhelmed. It was crazy. And I said, oh, I So can't. when you say overwhelmed, what do you mean by overwhelmed? Well, you know, I said, you had all these people out there and I saw all these eyes and faces looking at me. And I started speaking, and I started off, and I started <laughs> sounding like an auctioneer. Yeah, so I started going yes. faster, faster, yeah, faster, yeah, yeah. faster. And I said, okay. I said, this isn't good. We had someone at, at our uh, hospital starting a Toastmasters organization. I said, oh, I need to be a member of that because I need to develop my, my public speaking skills. Yeah, okay. So then you jumped right into it. You, yes, you, sir. You gave it, what, was it, what was it like in the very beginning, you know, when you first started out? Did oh. You feel it, the curtain back. You know, and, 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 and I'm so glad that you asked because this is, this is what I actually explained to uh, newcomers at all of our clubs. You know, so you come to a club and you hear all these people doing these great speeches and you're like, oh, I can never do that. And so I tell them, I said, well, each and every one of us would be just like you are now. So I was uh, afraid, frightened, holding on to the lectern, you know, the reading my notes, you know, and, and what happens is the, the value of Toastmasters is that by doing it over and over and over, you become more and more proficient and you become more confident you get feedback immediately at the meeting, and, and that's one of the values of Toastmasters. Yeah. And, and I think actually the feedback, right, the, the feedback is one of the huge pieces. As a matter of fact, just a, you know, a, a quick part on this end. Uh, I remember going to my first Toastmasters meeting, uh, Kevin, and back then there was a little um jar, right? There's a, I don't know if they still have them. It said um on it, and somebody was yes. responsible yes. for counting your ums, ums right? right? Yes, <laughs> and, so, and, and we, do, we do the same thing with our club. So we, we charge 25 cents yes. for ahs and ums. 
And what it does is it provides refreshments for us. So we love for people to come in and, and make mistakes. But when, when you attach a monetary value to it, it makes you more conscious of it. Exactly. And now, and, and, and being a Toastmaster, what happens is you start to hear it and you start to listen to other people speak and you start picking out odds and ums everywhere. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, my expertise is in, is in adult learning and I understand the, 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 the importance of pulling things from the blind spot and I think that's what Toastmasters really helps to do, is helps to take things that we don't even know we're doing. I remember the first time I think I owed $3.25 for a two minute talk and it was, it was 25 cents each time I said an um in the um jar. I wouldn't have known that, right? right Unless right, somebody right. was there counting them and pulling them, you know. But it made it, but it made it top of mind so you didn't spend three twenty five the next time. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Yeah. And that's the whole. And that's yeah. the whole idea. Yeah. See, it, it really amazes me how you know how uh, you know even people like yourself, right? You're obviously, a very confident person, you know, at, at this stage, and and you went through your own sort of stage fright with some of these things. Oh, no question. Right? No and, question. And you, so it, it's living proof that you can you can come into a situation being you know being terrified, being afraid. Uh, and still walk out, you know, after some hard work and some practice, being confident and, and empowered in the world. No question. And one thing I'd also like to, to bring to mind for your viewers is in Toastmasters, there, there are normally, uh, you have a Toastmaster, you have speeches, you have a speech evaluator, but one of the most valuable things in a Toastmasters meeting is table topics. And table topics is where somebody will ask you a question for, uh, ask you a random question that you have no idea what they're going to ask you and you have to give a one to two minute response yeah. and that is something that we do at every meeting but the value of it is if you are a job seeker that that gives you the opportunity to practice because when you're when you're going for a job interview they're going to ask you a question that you have no idea and you get to to give them a one or two minute response yeah. if you're going to be a politician that gives you the same type of same type of thing, or or if you are a manager and and you have to go and speak to the uh, the bosses or the the CEO, gives you the same type of advantage. So doing that and Toastmasters usually meets twice a month. So doing that twice a month on a regular basis helps to develop those skills. Yeah, it does, and that's sort of impromptu. And, and you know, we know from the from the research that that when we're using our brain in an impromptu way, we're firing off different sort of uh, you know neural pathways, and right. we actually get better and more effective at it. And and it, and what it does is that it helps to increase your creativity as well. Yeah, it sure does. So so let's uh, let's uh, how do how does somebody get involved with the Toastmasters? Where do they even hold meetings? So, you know, someone uh, one of the viewers is watching, saying, "Hey, I want to be like Kevin." <laughs> I'm terrified, but in a couple of years, I want to be out there, you know, we're running an inspired communications company and doing a lot of great work. How do they get involved? What's well, I don't know if they want to be bald-headed, but, <laughs> but um, to, to find out where a Toastmasters meeting is, is easy. You can go on the web and you type in Toastmasters, and then you go to the Toastmasters website, and then on the website itself, it has a box where you can put in your zip code. You then you put in your zip code, and it'll, it'll take you down to an area. Now, there are different types of clubs, so there are community clubs, where anybody can join, and then there are also corporate clubs, which is just for that uh, particular organization. So corporate clubs are closed, you can't join those. The community clubs are open, and, they've, and they meet at all various different times of the day. Yeah. So some meet at lunch, some meet in the evenings, and some also meet on the weekends. Yeah. And it's a nonprofit, so, it, so it's, it's very inexpensive to become a member, really just helping out with the dues in the, in the meeting space. And it's it really, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Patrick, it, it is very inexpensive when you think about the value of what you get out of it at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, well, bridging from Toastmasters, right? I, I also, you also are the New Jersey ch uh, chapter president for the National Speakers Association. Yes. And a, uh, a an expert in helping companies with their customer service, a customer experience expert. I want to touch right. on both of those briefly here. Okay. What is the NSA? Well, the NSA uh, we, we is, is the National Speakers Association, so. Our past president said, we are the NSA that speaks, not the NSA that listens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're an association of, of speakers and trainers and coaches. And uh, what we do, we provide thought leaders to that population and help them to develop their speaking skills and also their knowledge base. They do. OK. And because and, you're a professional speaker as well, professional Correct. presenter as well. Is that attached to the NSA or, yes. or is that how you sort of run your professional speaking experience through them or through your company inspired community? Right. So NSA, NSA is a group of, of predominantly professional speakers. OK. And, and, that's, and that's part of being the NSA. But it's not just limited to professional speakers because now coaches are 
involved and, and, and also um, and also consultants as well. Yeah, okay. And how does somebody get involved with that, with the NSA? Where, where would they? Uh, well, here in New Jersey, you could go to our, our website. You can just type in NSA New Jersey. You'll see our website and the information will be there. Um, but to become a member of the chapter, you need to be also a member of the national NSA. Yeah, okay. Good, excellent. And you know, as an adjunct uh, professor for Rutgers University, is this the type of uh, stuff that you're, you're teaching or are you teaching more of the process improvement with the, the Six Sigma black belt that you have? So with Rutgers, I, I, teach, I teach process improvement, uh, business ethics, uh, strategic planning, uh, yeah. communication, and, and also presentations. Course. Yeah, excellent, good. Well, uh, so tell, tell me uh, and, and tell us, right, inform us, what is a customer experience expert? I never heard it put that way before. Well, it, it's interesting. So have you ever been to Disney? Yeah, I have. And why do you go there? Uh, because uh, my two little ones love it. <laughs> and it is right. a nice, it's a right. nice, it's a nice place. It's a nice experience. You but, it, but, it's, but, it's, but it's about the experience. And, yes. and when, when, they, when they finish with the Super Bowl, the first thing, they, we're going to Disney World because of the experience. And so customer service is kind of a misnomer because everybody gets service, but everybody really goes for the experience. So it's a, it's a change in mindset and it's a shift from just an experience, uh, just a service to the actual experience yeah. itself. Yeah, okay, so, so as a customer experience expert, uh, so maybe a shed a little light, what, what do you do? You go into companies and they, they hire you, how does that work? Right, right, so I, I would go into a company and um, really identify what their, what their problems are. So usually it's a problem in communication with, between staff or communication between staff and the customer. Uh, could be problems with process. But what I'd like to do is also look at things that they are not doing that they can help to separate themselves from a competition. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a quick example. Good, okay. So let's say um, you own a, a shoe store and it's in a mall and you know you have people coming in and out and it's raining. Why not send a employee out with an umbrella to the car when somebody drives up? Now they're not necessarily coming to your store, but the fact that you're sending an employee out with an umbrella, the people are going to be like, wow, hmm. And they're going to take me where I'm going, and, yes. and and so now they're going to be interested. Well, why would somebody do that? So they're going to come and visit you. Yeah, yeah. That's part I, of I, providing an experience. I absolutely love it. I, I <laughs> love the concept, and you know, the concepts sometimes are, are so simple, but yes. oftentimes the most simple things are the most profound. And I'm so glad that you said that because a lot of people think there's going to be a lot of money to do it, but it's not. It's it's all about brainstorming and thinking about what the customer really needs. Yeah. We have uh, just a little over a minute left, but uh, what do you love most about the, the work that you do? I mean, you're involved everywhere. You're a professor, you're, you know, you're part of Toastmasters, NSA. This so, so, so how I connected all is that I get to touch people's lives every day yeah. and make their lives better. And, and, that, and that makes me excited. Yeah. So in, 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 touching, you know, in touching people's lives, has it ever come back to you in a, in, in a way? Do you hear from customers after, you know, afterwards down the road? And I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Not, not only customers, but also in Toastmasters. So I'll have people that come back to me and, and, and say, you know, that was a great speech. And, you know, something that I did maybe three or four years ago. And they still remember. And that's the most important thing is that you leave people with the opportunity to remember what you said and be able to repeat it to somebody else. Yeah. So that's a, that's a piece in public speaking as a professional no question. public speaker that, uh, that you would leave with people here, even on this show, that it's important to, to that, that they remember you and remember what you said. That's by, exactly by right. Um, uh, so Kevin, I, I, it was really terrific having you on this show and hopefully we'll have you back. I mean, obviously you're a wealth of information and you know, uh, uh, you're a, a tremendous guest to have on the Career Corner, Corner Show. So thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Patrick. Come on. Okay, excellent. Uh, our guest uh, was uh, Kevin Thompson and Kevin, hopefully we're gonna have him back on. All right, thanks for watching Career Corner. SCAN, the Social Community Activities Network, has been serving the active adult community since 1988. Our main campus is conveniently located in the basement level of the Monmouth Mall, near the mall management offices. SCAN's affordable classes include physical fitness, computers, digital photography, Spanish, Italian, literature, art, music, TV production, and more. Also, Medicare resources and programs such as Take Control of Your Health, financial literacy for older women, and brain fitness. SCAN will be featuring trips and lunch and learn programs geared to complement your lifestyle. Visit our website, www.scannj.com,
or call us at 732-542-1326 or visit us. Welcome back to Career Corner. I'm Patrick Howell and we have a, another fabulous guest with us today. Uh, her name is Kristen Fisher, and uh, Kristen is going to be talking uh, about a few things. She's going to be talking about uh, what it's like to be a copywriter, a journalist, and an author. She's also an author, so I am uh, thrilled to, uh, to welcome Kristen Fisher. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, it's great. It, it is really uh, exciting to, uh, to have you on the show. What I really uh, absolutely love about the, the Career Corner show is, uh, Kristen, we have an opportunity to, uh, to inform empower and inspire and the mm -hmm. informed part is really around uh, teaching people what it's like to work in in specific careers mm -hmm. uh, you have a specialty that that mm -hmm. not a lot of people have as a matter of fact i'd submit that there are probably some people that don't know what a copywriter is what a copywriter does so why don't we start there what is a copywriter well i always tell clients you know when a client calls and they say i need copywriting help and i say you do know i am not the c with the circle around it so copywriting is not licensing although that is a you know another meaning of the word copywriting is business writing so you go to a website and there's text there or you pick up a brochure and uh you know most likely a copywriter has written that Oh, okay. So it's kind of that, you know, business, it's a little tech, it's a lot of marketing speak, and I don't have a background in marketing either. Yeah, so you don't, uh, and I want to get to that no. too. Then. I, we're <laughs> going to get to that then, uh, you know, a little bit. How does someone break into this field? Because you don't have a, a background in marketing. So, so copyright for, you know, for the viewers at home really is uh, this, this marketing sort of sales kind yes. of driven piece, right? Yes. Like looking to get customers for, the, for your clients. Yes. Uh, that's a good, then let's lead right into this. How the heck did you get into this if you, if you don't have a background in it? Yeah, I have to give you the, you know, a little bit of background. I ha went to school for science. I went to Stockton down in Pomona. And, um, you know, I always could write as a child and as a young adult. And, you know, coming out, I did not really want to be in the sciences. So I, I went into a newsroom and had some experience there. And, you know, that writing skill is kind of innate. And I think a lot of people know when they have it, you just don't know to, like, make a career of it. You know, now yes. I'm like, I would have gone back for English, you know, if, if I knew. But who knew? Yeah. So, you know, to get into copywriting, I was just looking to get... Um, went into news for a little while, went into the environmental field to, you know, use the degree. And you just know when you're not where your talent lies, yeah. you know, because I was writing the technical reports for the environmental firm. So okay, I knew yeah. that that was a strength and that when it was time to go out in the, uh, the dirt and the mud, that that was just not where my heart was. So copywriting was just a way, you know, wow, you know, you think I want to be a writer and how feasible is that? You can't sit home and write books all yeah, day. It sounds, poems, it sounds right? great, you know, but it takes a while. You know, I'm not there yet to be sitting home writing books all day. That's, that's the dream. But uh, I got into copywriting and I worked with a marketing agency. And, you know, I just went off the fly of the seat of my pants and they said, do a brochure. And this is, you know, that voice that you would hear in your head when you read a brochure that's what I wrote in and really? I got okay. better at it and better at it and kind of branched out and then I said well I'm gonna use my news background and do some magazines. Yeah I want to talk and, a little bit about that yeah, too, so, 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 you know, well, yeah. yeah it's 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 you know when you said specialty I'm like there's no specialty because now I write everything so you know it was a matter of building a lot of confidence. Well you're answering all my <laughs> questions I love it. <laughs> Just uh, so is, are there specializations in this copyright field however though? Oh yeah okay. there's a lot like of people. What? Like what, what might be like a, an area that somebody that's, a, that's good at writing that's good at cop copyright look good at marketing kind of material what might they go into? Medical okay especially in New Jersey is huge because of all the pharma companies. Yes. Um, some people specialize in IT some people specialize in health industry any type of industry I haven't per se done that. Um, you know, I do specialize a little bit in website content, but for any industry. For any, okay. So, you know, you don't really have to come in as I'm going to be a copywriter and this is my background in, you know, pharmaceuticals. And you can, you know, kind of branch out as you go. But certainly coming in, if you have that background, when I came in, I had a little bit of environmental experience. So I would go to the environmental firms and say, I don't want to write your technical reports. I want to write your brochures that get you your customers. Okay. So that's kind of how I leveraged in and then felt my way around. And, yeah. you know, I said, if I can write this for an environmental company, I can write this for any kind of company. So then you kind of spread your wings yeah. a little so bit. So if somebody has, you know, particular expertise in a sp particular mm -hmm. farmer, maybe they come from the farmer world, mm -hmm. right? Then, and they're also a good writer and they want to get into the copyright, you know, space, it, it, 
can't hurt to target that as your initial type of customer, right? Sure, I mean, use your background because if you just say I'm a writer, they're gonna say, okay, you know, they wanna see clips. This industry is about, you know, not just selling yourself, but saying, I'm a great writer here. That's what I've done. And then, you know, your, your work has to speak for itself yeah. a little bit. So, so, so two things, I heard you say before that it, you know, for you it was an innate thing, like writing. Yes. <laughs> now what part of writing was innate for you? Was it the, was it the mm. creative end or the, 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 the grammar end of things, or both? Oh, because some, some people are very creative, but you might say, the grammar, forget about it, they need 12 editors. Um, I'm pretty good with the grammar. You know, when I, I had this seventh grade English class and everyone was so miserable. And I loved it, I loved putting the, ripping the sentences apart. And you know, I just thought, okay, you know, anything is better than math to, you know, when you're in seventh grade, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's really, is just the ability to be creative. I just always, um, in college, when I was doing that environmental work, uh, we had a course in law, and all of the really super smart scientist students were just not doing great in it. And I was like, this is great. We get to read books, and we get to write reports, and yeah. you know what I mean? And they were all like, well, if you need help you know, picking up insects and going in the swamp, we're there for you. So I kind of felt in college like, wow, like I just have a draw to the written word, you know, yeah. to books and... Yeah. Well, well you, you, you appear to really like the work that you do. I do. Uh, now, in every single career, there are always the ups to, and the downs, right? The tides, you know, in, the tides is out. Flow. <laughs> uh, what are some, uh, some of the things that people, somebody maybe watching this show that's considering getting into the field, maybe what's something they should consider? Well, copywriting, you can work for an agency, so you can still be full-time. So now I full-time freelance from home. So I literally wake up and go to the room next door, which is my office. It's a power commute. And uh, so there's different you know, things you can do. Like I'm working for all different clients. I'm getting my own clients. Okay. You could go to a marketing agency or an ad agency and just be their go-to copy person. So when you say agency, it's almost like an agent, like somebody who's like just going to get through the like work. Like a big gonna marketing firm, like an Ogilvy firm or you know, one of those big guys. You could go right to them and be a copywriter too. Okay, okay. so there's a, there's a lot of avenues or you could just there's do freelance. There's a lot of avenues or you could do the freelance self-employment, which is kind of what I fell into. Yeah, okay, so. excellent, good. So uh, oh, tell us a little bit about your journalism. I know you're a journalist too. Where, what, what's the background on that? Uh, how did that begin? What's your yeah, I worked in the newsroom. Uh, I worked for the Observer, and then I worked for the press, and I also worked for the Coast Star. And I just loved being able to go and listen to a person and interview them. And when they said something, say, that's the quote. And I could see it in print, you know, when it's out in dialogue and there's quotes around it. Um, these things excited me, and these things made sense to me, and putting together headlines. And so when I went out on my own, I said, why should I just be a copywriter? Because some of the work I do as a copywriter is technical and can be a little dry, and it's not always the most interesting topic. Yeah, okay. You know, but when you want to work for yourself, uh, you want to stay in business. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, like any job, you don't do your dream job 40 hours a week. And you want to stoke you know? that creative fire, right? Yeah, because so. You, you're an author yeah. as well. Uh, you're an author, and that's a, I have more than one book. Yes. Uh, and so that seems to be, uh, or tell me, is it like sort of an, an ancillary natural, you know, progression from being a journalist, a copywriter, and then writing a book? Is that just, was... was I think like the having the newsroom experience helped because then I got into the marketing copy and then it was like well I have this background too so then I would you know learn about pitching publications and you know writing articles and now you know I just wrote a piece this week for a prevention magazine and I was published a couple months ago a little piece in health and you know I've done some work in New Jersey monthly and being able to take an idea that I want to write about um, and turn it into something that they want to publish is amazing. So to say, you know, I did a feature on yoga on the beach in New Jersey for New Jersey Monthly. And I loved practicing yoga. And yeah. to be able to say, I want to do an article and we're going to break it down like this and it turned into a nice feature spread Good and for you. It added all the cool places on the Jersey Shore to do yoga. Yep. And I got paid to do that. Yeah. And Life yeah, is that's why it good. sounds like you know, you're staying to, in the field that you want. For it. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, about your. So your, yeah, your book. this is my latest baby. We call them babies in the writing world. Okay. Um, this is when talent isn't enough, and this is a guide for anybody who is uh, in a creative career. Whether you want to be full time self employed like me, whether you just want to do it on the side. You know, a lot of people in our economy are doing the side gig thing. They want to feel it out. But a lot of creative people don't really have a lot of business know-how. I certainly didn't. I didn't know that the majority of my work would actually be sales. 
Okay. You know, I thought yeah. sales was a guy with a briefcase, but sales is Kristen Fisher on the phone. Of course it is. Trying to say, hey, I really want to write your website yeah. copy, you know. And it's branding yourself it's and it's branding marketing yourself. And, and it's yes, getting there's it. so much when you really want to be on your own that it's more than your talent. So I guess the, uh, the title is pretty appropriate. <laughs> yeah. uh, when, when did you publish this book? This book came out in January 2013. Oh, okay. Uh, by a publisher, Career Press, located well, in good. New Jersey. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and for you, when did you, like, what, what brought you to the understanding that, that creatives really, you know, need this, this practical business knowledge and that, that people would want to buy a book around it? Yeah, um, Mirror, you know, when I would come into situations and have to feel it out myself and, you know, sometimes you do great and sometimes you fall and it's a learning lesson. And I said, I really want to put this into a book, but I don't want it to just be me telling people, here's what to do and here's what not to do. I really wanted it to be other creatives that people look up to. Oh, I know his illustrations. I know his photography. I, I know her crafts and what they went through. So it's broken down into chapters like uh, accounting and client relations and marketing. And it's kind of this just easy book for a creative person. Not that creative people don't want to read tons of books, but we really, you know, even the book lovers don't want to go through guides on how to file their taxes. So no, many no. of them are just like, I just won't do that, you know, but that's not the answer either. So you, this is kind of a book that just puts everything that you need to kind of start that business and make sure it's legit and also infuse your own creative fun into it and your own background and your own brand. Yeah. So it sounds like it's, it's fairly, it's, it's, it's simply written so people can pick it up and actually yeah. read it instead of let it collect us. I think I heard some yeah. statistic like some 80% of the books that are bought anyway, people don't read, right? Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. get a book and they, you know, read the first couple chapters and put it away. What you tried to do was write a book that people Or can... yeah, I mean you can flip through it and say I really need help in like how to put together a contract. You know what I mean? You know, when I publish a little piece in a magazine, that's a two or three page contract. And yeah. you have to know how to do that in order to sell yourself. So you can go right to that contract section and say, oh, this is what this means and kind of put it together. And there's really some good like stories, what right. other people went through, you know, their triumphs, their pitfalls. They were really candid and, and that's what makes it a good book. Good. So you can, people can relate to it. Excellent. We have about a minute and a half left, okay. uh, uh, Kristen. Uh, a question I ask all the guests, what do you love most about what you're doing? I mean, you're, you're, you're a copywriter, a journalist, an author. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're really, you know, really moving down this path in the creative yeah. space. What do you love most? I think I like being in my home. I think I like having the, um, there's not a day that I don't remember having a half hour commute, which is really not a big deal, but there's not a day that I don't remember being, you know, stuck in the cube, uh, frying under the fluorescent lights, and just feeling like I was not in my element and that I was meant to do something different. So I really like being on my own, being able to, you know, you don't have, you can't always say I don't want to work with this client, but you have a little bit of freedom and now building my platform and my brand. Good. And that's just kind of cool. It's getting to the point where I can say I want to take this client or I want to pitch an article on this. And because of my background now, it gets accepted and I can write about stuff that I love. That's, that's per, pretty cool. That is pretty <laughs> cool. Actually, I didn't get a chance to read your book yet, but I, but I will. You will. I, I certainly <laughs> will read your book. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really great to have you on the show. The last thing, if someone wanted to get into, into the copywriting field, just really briefly here, what, what, would, they, what would they do? What would the, the first thing that they can take on? I would say start by even going to some creative agencies where they sub out the work for projects or, you know, take a company's brochure and rewrite it and see, you know, play with it. Okay. And then, you know, take that as a clip Great. and say, you know, this is a mock write-up of what I can do. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for watching Career Corner. Our guest was Kristen Fisher.